Let's talk domain and range. Right here, you've got a function, okay? And uh, you know about functions, right? We know that it has an input and it has an output. Our X is gonna be our independent variable that goes in and our output is gonna be F of X and Y is F of X. So if for instance, our, in, our X was three, we plug the three in, three times four is 12 minus five, we would get our output is seven, our Y is seven. And we can make a table out of that. Let's get specifically to the domain and range after that review of functions. All right, the domain is all possible input values of X, while the range is all possible output values of Y. A way that I've remembered this in the past is that the domain is like data entry, what goes in, and the range is the result. It's helped me over the years. Maybe it'll help you remember it. Within the domain, you want to see one value go into the function and the matching range, you will see one exactly one value coming out. Let's try this function here. Now, let's say we have a domain element of two. So within all of the domain, we're going to stop at two and see what correlates for the range element in this case. So let's plug in two here, and we've got two times two is four, plus one is five. Yes, yeah, so we're, when the domain hits two, the range is going to hit five. All right, let's try this, and we're going to find the domain here. And um, just to make a point, most equations, you're going to have your, your domain be all real numbers. There's not really going to be any anything that holds you up in an equation like that. Now, there are a few possibilities where you're going to have to pay extra close attention. So you might get to an equation and see, find the range and you say all real numbers. But wait a minute, we have a problem here. If uh, our domain element is something that's going to make this undefined. And uh, think about it. Remember, something, a fraction over zero or anything divided by zero is not possible. So the range here will be all real numbers except when x equals two. Another equation that you have to be careful on is one like this, 4x squared plus three. Let's take a look at its graph so I can explain it visually. So check this out. Here is the parabola for this quadratic equation here, but you'll notice the range doesn't go below three. Why is that? Well, if the domain hits zero, let's say, uh, well, zero squared is zero. Zero times four is zero plus three is three. It can't go lower than that. Well, yeah, it, the domain can hit a lower number, negative one, but look what happens. Negative one squared is just one. And then one times four is four plus three is seven. So no matter how low you go, you're going to end up squaring your negative number into a positive, and that's how that graph is going to look.